Oh. 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 Guys, guys, everybody calm down. Everybody shut up. Welcome to the Wolf Den. Podcast, everybody. You, especially you. Especially you. Alerts. God. Can I have two seconds? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you. Will, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you can you see the spit up on my shirt <laughs> that my son decided to lay upon me before the show? No, I cannot. Okay. Good. good. Did I'm you trying get to be clean here? Did you get you went you went to the house the other day. Did you get your your apparel or did you forget? No, I got it. I got it. I oh, just we, uh we haven't done laundry yet. So, I will wear it next week and maybe by then you folks at home will have gotten yours. Uh, WolfDenApparel.com. Check it out. Yes, of course. We got new shirts that I'm not wearing right yeah. now. I also spilled coffee all over mine. So There you go. I, why haven't you just made all the merch brown? <laughs> that's a good, <laughs> that's I, a good I point. Spill coffee, I spilled coffee on the desk mat. Mm-hmm. The white desk mat. You spilled coffee on the shirt. At this point, I feel like you should just start making the wolf den colors brown. So that this way we don't have this problem. It's true. That would that would solve a lot of problems for me. Yeah. Um right now I have uh I have a little I have a little coffee from uh this is from uh uh what do you call it? Brooklyn Roasting Company. Uh with Fancy. some Chobani oat milk. And I put a little bit of peppermint extract because I just brushed my teeth. And <laughs> I shaved off a little of that block of chocolate in here. Ooh. So that's what I'm working with right now. I, I saw I saw your Instagram uh, story about like pouring the beans in slow motion into the grinder. Yes. And we I finally just set up our coffee maker after years of doing pour over. And I wanted to oh. do a response. Of me pouring my Dunkin' Donuts pre-made grounds into the <laughs> thing. You should do that. But I, I will probably do that tomorrow when I make coffee in the morning. I want to announce everybody. We've been on iTunes this whole time. You should yeah. go over there and give us a listen over there because we're ranked around number 100 for gaming. And I'd love to be there you go. more than that. <laughs> there you go. We are, we are the bottom of the best. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There you go. How do you like me now, mom? Yeah, I want to do I want to do better than that. Come on, go over there and just, just leave it playing or something. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> we have many things to talk about today among those uh yeah. there's there's new Switch rumors, but this time it's about a Switch 2 and not the Pro. Yes. Which uh, might be the Pro, we don't know. <laughs> uh of course I'm going to have some thoughts and opinions. Uh mm-hmm. also Nintendo like like shadow dropped it like a new thing they would just they bit they took like a week off of twitter and then like shadow dropped an update that adds a lot of like weird uh like achievement type stuff yeah. um otherwise there's some pokemon news and there's some steam deck stuff yes uh, but first we have to do two things one yes. we have to thank you guys we have to thank yes. uh always Ray Zeflin for the 41 months of support. Spoopy Girl for the 11 months. Last Colossi for the 5 months. Jeffrey Sorensen for the 13 months. Accidentally missed you guys last week. Have my monthly prime sub. Well, thank you, Jeffrey Sorensen. It doesn't matter. You can take a week off. It's cool. You worry about yourself, right? Uh, Gamer Lady, thank you for the 11 months. Love this podcast. Looking forward to it every week. Thanks, Wolf Bros. Thank you, Gamer Lady, for supporting us. Mythicent, thank you for the 4 months. And Spoopy Girl, thanks for gifting more subs. Now, we can talk about the free games that you get included with the services that you already pay for. That's right, gang. It is March 1st, which means it's a new month, and it's a Tuesday, which means that both PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold are giving you some free games, if you're a member, of course. And we start, as always, with the PlayStation side of things. Uh, And this is an interesting month, because on the PS4... You get Ark Survival Evolved, uh, and you get Team Sonic Racing, and on the PS5, you get Ghost Runner. But also, on the PS4 and the PS5, 
on both systems, you get Ghosts of Tsushima Legends, the standalone cooperative multiplayer experience for Ghosts of Tsushima that you don't I, need the full game for. I did not know Ghosts of Tsushima had a multiplayer element. Uh, neither did I. That's crazy. I think... I think what it was, like the game itself does not ship with the multiplayer component. That was okay. just that was a separate add-on. Um and this month they're giving it to you for free. <laughs> Interesting. Uh well Ghost of Tsushima, everybody loves Ghost of Tsushima. I've never heard anything about the multiplayer, so I have no idea if that's gonna yeah. be any good. Uh Team well, Sonic I mean, Racing, people like that. Yeah, those are those are good games. I mean, granted, they're not Mario Kart, nothing is, but mm -hmm. if your only system is a PlayStation Check this out, because th these are pretty fun. Now, now, I have played a little bit of Ghost Runner. I played it at a convention, and I really liked it. And then I played it at home on my Switch, and I really did not like it. Uh, I thought that it had a lot of weird, uh, uh, like, like a, it's a lot of weird game design quirks that I, that I wasn't down with. Um, but that was on the Switch. This is PlayStation 5. Yeah. Maybe they ironed yes. some things out. I heard the Switch version doesn't run that good. Um so I don't know. It's free. You can yeah. Try it out if you've ever been interested in Ghost Runner. It's like it's yeah. like a uh, it's supposed to be like a Mirror's Edge type deal. But you're a ninja. Um, it just didn't feel as smooth because it 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 it, it felt, felt really clunky. Like like the way that right. it, it made you like chain together all of your moves and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Um. They there is an update on this. They just want to clarify something. When redeeming Ghost of Tsushima Legends. You may see it labeled as trial. Uh, please kick through to download. You will receive a the complete standalone version of Ghost of Tsushima Legends. So, and I did this already. When you go to the page, it says trial for some reason. But if you click add to library or download or whatever, it gives you the full game. So there's a misprinting on the the website itself. But pay also, no mind to it. It says Ghost of Tsushima Legends is not available to users who already own a digital copy of Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. I'm assuming because Director's Cut includes Legends already? I'm hoping I so. I believe so. Yeah, because Director's be really Cut weird. is the PS5 version. So? Well, uh, Director's Cut was the is the one they made specifically for PS5. Okay. That comes with like the, the fancy white box and stuff. It's the enhanced version, basically. And I believe that does come with Legends. I hate I hate the way Sony did this console generation. I know. <laughs> the, 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 the like different skews from like the PS4 to PS5 really fucks up everything. Yeah. I think that's a that's this is the best month PlayStation's had in a really long time with the with the included PlayStation Plus games, I think. Yeah, it's a pretty solid month. Over on Xbox. However, not so much. Well, I mean, never underestimate. SpongeBob games apparently. Uh, so for the entire month, you get the Flame and the Flood. Uh, from March 16th to April 15th, you get the Street Power Soccer. Those are Xbox One and Series X games. And then from March 1st to the 15th, you get Sacred Two Fallen Angel. And from the 16th to the 31st, you get SpongeBob's Truth or Square. Those are 360 games that you can play on your Xbox One or Series X. Uh, yeah, people like SpongeBob games, uh, and this is the 360 version. So um, it, it's not like yes. the it's not like the weird remake that they made recently that I mm -hmm. tried and was it was broken to all hell. Yeah. Um. Uh, otherwise, these other ones are not. This isn't good. This isn't a good month. No, I've heard of the Sacred Games, and I've heard they're bad. So <laughs> that's all I know. Um, we can also point out that on a Game Pass. Flight Simulator is coming to cloud gaming. Ooh. Uh, Kentucky Route That's Zero. Nice. People like that game. Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy is cloud, console, and PC. Wow. Uh, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. Um, and Lawn Mowing Simulator. There you go. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to be a dad, here it, you it, go, guys. It says Xbox One. Weird. Uh, and we also might as well just throw in there, uh, Majora's Mask is out now for uh, N64 on Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. And they announced what the next one's going to be, didn't they? Oh, they already did? They usually do when they release. Did they not do it? Usually when they released one. I, I didn't. They 
announce what the next one is. I didn't hear them do the new one. I guess they didn't. But we also got, uh, I guess we got Earthbound. <laughs> yeah. So maybe they're taking March off. Yeah. And real quick, if you have PlayStation Now, you'll get the big game is Shadow Warrior 3, because that just came out. Uh, Crisis Remastered Rel- Relicta? Relicta? R E L I C T A. Cool. Uh, Chicken Police, paint it red. That's it. <laughs> uh, all right. That's that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty solid from PlayStation this month. Yeah. So if you have any of those services, that's the games you can look forward to now. I played uh, the other day. I played uh, Forza Horizon in bed on my Aya Neo because I was getting FOMO from not having a Steam Deck. <laughs> uh, I was playing it off Game Pass, and it was pretty sick. I, I, it's weird that you have to that playing the uh, the Aya Neo is curing your FOMO for the Steam Deck. You know, that's like you know me missing out on all these nice new Batman toys that are coming out for the new movie by playing with the broken ones from when I was a kid. No, no, it's it's like it's like they're coming out with a new Tesla. So you decided to go drive around your Lamborghini because you feel bad you don't have a Tesla. That's what yeah. it's like. Because this thing was $1,400. <laughs> and I'm upset that I don't have the $400 one. <laughs> yeah. It would probably run Everyone looks like exactly the same. It. Yeah, but it looks... We're going to talk about that at the end we of are the show. Talk about we, have, we are jumping the gun here a little bit. I did pre-order one, and I am not getting one until quarter two, and I'm very upset about that. I, oh. I, here's, I, I'm going to talk about it now. Weird All things right. going on with the Steam Deck. There's a lot of fucking like like uh like fanboys all of a sudden that love valve i don't know what happened i don't know well in what world this this pre-order rollout makes any fucking sense i've never seen anything like this before you give your five dollars and then two months later or three months uh, two months i think then two months later at a very specific time, you have the privilege of fulfilling your pre-order, and then based on that, you get like a like a like a they roll it out week by week. Who they just every week they divvy out a certain amount of 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 uh, consoles, even though they already did two pre-orders already. It doesn't make any sense, and I understand like they're tr- like some people view this as like a positive thing like they're being transparent they're giving out as much as they have when they get them i don't th- right. i don't think so normally it's just we got all of these units and we're going to give them out when we have them not every single week we're going to give them like there there's a demand issue there's a clear demand issue right, right. and they want to make sure that like scalpers and bots and general assholes do not get their hands on them that's fine for people who legitimately want them that's totally fine so i mean if they have to do some cockamamie scheme to get them out i like i understand i'm not saying they're right to do it but they had to do something because so ordering anything these past two years has been a disaster so i really wouldn't care if i didn't have to make a video on it now by the right. time i get my video it's gonna be super late but at the same time they said it would be out in February, then it got... De- well, they actually said it would be out in December, then it got delayed to February, and now they're, they're saying it's going to start shipping on the 28th. We never said you were going to get yours on the 28th, <laughs> even if you pre- even if you were in the first five minutes of the initial pre-order. We never said you were going to get it on the 28th. We, we said yeah. we were going to start shipping them to just a few people, not everybody. So I thought I, mean, I was getting it on the 25th first. Then I thought I was getting it on the 28th. And now, uh, and then knows? I was like, well, it's going to be after that because they got to ship it on the 28th. And now it's like, okay, well, now who fucking knows? It's going to come out and like, yeah. I'm going to get my shipment in like freaking uh, May. And then it's going to roll out. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the Steam Deck. No, not Until yet. later. But, but Gabe, if you're watching, you're walking your ass all over Seattle. I want you to come over to Brooklyn and give Bob his, his Steam Yeah, deck. what the fuck, dude? You you have like actual people who paid for it to to fulfill, and you're out there friggin' tossing them around. 
Anyway. Anyway. Uh, Switch 2. Switch 2. There's a new Switch coming out, maybe. Uh, this For is, real this time. Uh, this is uh, an article from comicbook.com, which uh, links to a tweet by Tech Power Up. Would you like to uh, read the article? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll read the article. Sorry, it's formatted oddly. Uh, the Nintendo Switch 2, or at least the successor to the standard Nintendo Switch, Switch Lite, and Switch OLED, uh, may have just been leaked. And by leaked, we mean something has surfaced that points towards the existence of not just a new Nintendo console, but specifically a successor to the Switch. What has not been leaked is what the console's name is, what it looks like, when it will release, how much it will cost, or anything super salient you'd want to know. That said, it does look like we finally have proof to put to to put uh, to rumors that a Switch successor is in the works and possibly not very far away from releasing. The new speculation comes courtesy of the NVIDIA DLSS source code, which mentions NVN2. Why is this relevant? Well, because NVN is used to refer to the Nintendo Switch. <gasps> Putting a 2 after this indicates a different new product and more specifically a successor to the Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, this is all that can be derived from these files. Some uh, some seem to think this indicates a release date is only a couple of years away at maximum, and this is reasonable to speculate, but it's just speculation. So so, so this this tweet uh, is the source code for NVIDIA's DLSS, which is the technology that uh, does uh, uh, well, I don't want to call it artificial upscaling. It's digital upscaling for. Uh, or, or algorithmic upscaling for uh, yeah. for for N Nvidia chips. So, so so everybody was saying that the Switch Pro would have some sort of DLSS chip in it that would be specifically for upscaling from 1080p up to potentially 4K. Um, and this is the source code for that technology that has been leaked. And there is a line in that code that says. Uh, what was it? NVN2, which is correct. NVN is Nintendo Switch, so people are saying that NVN2 is Nintendo Switch 2. If 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 you're if, maybe you're on the same page as me, but that's a lot of hoops to jump through to to <laughs> assume that there's a Switch 2 coming out anytime soon. I would bet all of the money that I have that Nintendo is working on their next console. I mean, obviously. Yeah. But this you I don't know if Go this ahead. leak is necessarily giving us any information that's worth anything. Well, I think this is the first publicly revealed proof that Nintendo is working on a Switch 2. This is the first time that we, the public, have gotten anything remotely concrete pointing towards a, a Switch successor. We've said this many times on the podcast. As soon as a console comes out, there a company is already working on the next generation of that console. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just got the PlayStation 5. Sony's already thinking about the PlayStation 6. It's preliminary, and it's not for a very long time, but they're already starting to think of what they can do for the next generation. That's the way all video game companies work. That's the way they've worked since the beginning. Well, not really since the beginning, but since like the 90s, I would say. But yeah, this is just like clearly they did not want this to get out because mm -hmm. if they they announce that they're working on a Switch Two, that's going to affect sales of the current Switch. Um, but this is this is now it's out in the open that the Switch Two is a thing, possibly. So when I first heard, so and uh, Nvidia DLSS is obviously not on the Switch. Um, right. When I first heard about this, my initial thought was uh, the the Nintendo Switch uses. NVIDIA Tegra chip. So it's got NVIDIA right. technology in the Switch. My initial reaction when I heard about this was, okay, NVIDIA put DLSS on that Tegra and is trying to pitch it to Nintendo or something. So that doesn't mean Nintendo is going to use DLSS. It just, it just means right. they're fucking around. You know, that's why they haven't announced anything yet. You yeah. know, like they're, they're working on it. Of course they're working on it. We all know they're working on it. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't point at this and be like, uh, they're making another Switch, 
and it's gonna be 4K and it's gonna have NVIDIA DLSS. No, it just means they've been yeah. they worked on something. They were screwing around with something. Who knows what's gonna happen? I don't believe anything until I hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I think just because we have something from because this is like part of a bigger leak from NVIDIA, like they were cyber attacked basically and this is just a small part of like a bigger uh leak but i think the danger is because if this is switch two and it, it signs are pointing to it possibly is all they're saying is that they're working on a switch two so be wary of other websites that are saying oh nvidia is working on the switch too that means it's gonna run like a te tegra 9000 it's yeah, gonna like <laughs> feature all this other crap it's and it's so gonna annoying it's gonna be like 16k and hdr version 7 well, there, Dolby there's a Atomos up your butt there's gonna be a lot of really clickbaity speculation and stuff you just have to understand that we fucking know nothing about this thing other than nvidia <laughs> is it worked on something probably maybe and doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily be in the next switch they might not hey, even look, use nvidia well, I think if they're going to do a Switch 2, it makes sense to go with NVIDIA again because their uh, technology worked so well the first time. Mm -hmm. And I think they've been working with NVIDIA for years, even before the Switch, but I might be wrong on that. What was the GameCube? I remember that was like a big deal. When the GameCube ATI? Launched. Yeah, because back in the day, it was NVIDIA versus a ATI, wasn't it? Yeah, hold on. Let me just and then didn't I'll, ATI I'll like get that. bought by AMD or something? All right, you look into that. I'm going to read this tweet that I thought that, was yeah. funny. Uh, this is by Johnny Zachari, who says, I called it. Looks like Nintendo Switch Pro or 2 info has been leaked. I've been saying a Nintendo Switch was going to launch in 2019, 2020, 2021, or 2022. If not, then we'd definitely see a new Switch in 2023 or 2024. So it's exactly as <laughs> I predicted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the chat uh, saying ATI, yeah, was was the GameCube. Yeah, a ATI, that was the graphics card, and ATI was bought by AMD. That's what I said. You said NVIDIA. No, I said NVIDIA. Did I? Say, I meant a, I meant AMD. Yeah. Because because so, back in the day it was NVIDIA versus uh, ATI, and then ATI yes. got bought by AMD, and now it's NVIDIA versus AMD. Yeah. Uh. And AMD powers the other two systems. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so there's another tweet uh, by Luigi Blood who goes further into this uh, NVIDIA uh, source. Luigi Blood... Uh, uh, I gotta be careful how I word this. Because he's very, he's very particular. I, I see his mm. tweets. Um, he kind of just like breaks down a lot of uh, uh, da data mining stuff on on, on Twitter. Right. Uh, he says the they said Nvidia DLSS source code leaked, except I instantly see NVN two in the screenshot, which sounds switch to specific code. NVN is the graphics API that was specifically made for the Switch by NVIDIA, so NVN2 is certainly enough to raise my curiosity. Just to say this, maybe it's something else. But I can't make any other sense of NVN2. My mind goes straight to Switch 2 or Pro or whatever. Someone would need to take a serious look at the code and see what it truly makes a reference to than my stupid assumption based on a folder name, just to be sure. See, he, he keeps like, like, uh, like dulling what he's saying because he knows news outlets are going to pick it apart and like yeah. write clickbaity articles about it. Uh, in terms of specifications about NVN2, here's a finding. Oh, here's something. Uh, this is from NW Player one two three. NVIDIA leaks have NVN2, which seems to be the graphics API for the Switch Pro based on Amp Amper, with ray tracing support and DLSS 2.2. Uh, turning GPUs provides the same basic graphics functionality present, present in the previous generation GPUs. After second generation Maxwell GPUs as well as... Okay, I don't understand any of this. I, I would be... Wait. Amper-based GPUs are more preferable since they are more cap compatible with the NX implementation. NX is the original... like Yeah, the uh, codename for Switch. Yeah, yeah codename for Switch. Um, 
I would I would be fucking blown away if the next switch has ray tracing. <laughs> that <laughs> that doesn't just make any like, sense to me. Yeah. That's like way too much. <laughs> yeah. And then Luigi Blood says, here's my two cents about Nintendo present it up. Uh, Nintendo president saying the Switch is in the middle of its life. It's so fucking vague, and no one would say when their system is at the end of their life as a business strategy in case what's next would fail. Whenever it comes to Nintendo being mad, they wouldn't be any more mad compared to when the Giga Leak happened, which included a lot of current gen and previous gen content as well. Keep that in mind. Another thing, Nintendo always develops what's next as soon as the system gets out there, just like every freaking... Uh, company does it is nothing it is something they have always said i don't see why uh this would be an exception and then he goes on to talk about how uh people are calling him an insider and it's literally just him looking at screenshots and blah 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 yeah. um so yeah a in terms of uh the switch being in the middle of its life cycle uh i don't i don't know I, th I think it's still got a lot of legs to be completely honest with you i think it's got another year or two left um, so I don't think it's yeah. in the middle of his life cycle, but I think it's still got some time left. Yeah, I think, I think we're reaching a point where the switch two or whatever they call it could come at any moment. I just don't think it's going to be any moment soon. I, that, yeah, I think within the next year or two, year or two you're going to start to see Nintendo like announce, announce something and then start to ramp up for the, like the next, the true successor to the Switch, not just the light or the OLED or the whatever. Yeah, I, 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 one thing I've noticed, one trend I've noticed when consoles are at the end of their life cycle, they release all of their best games. <laughs> like they release like a yeah. lot <laughs> of really good shit yeah. at the very end of the life cycle. And this year is the biggest year for the Switch. There's a lot of great stuff happening. Um, and there's a, there's a freaking Zelda game. And that usually happens at the end of the life cycle, too. So it does make me a little worried for the Nintendo Switch. But I think that in terms of sales and stuff, the Switch is still on a huge incline. So I don't see why they would even have any uh, uh, reason to to go to a, another console. I mean, yeah, Nintendo that's... always, whenever they make a new console, they always say, we're going to continue to support the old console. This isn't a new one. This is like an aside. This is like an uh, it's like. Yeah, this is you add, you, know, you can have a third pillar. Yeah. Yeah. When and we all they know just it's immediately not. kill the old one. Yeah. Yeah. So they could maybe try to go. They could try to say something like that. I don't know. But again, I don't. I think we got at least another year or two left until we yeah. uh, start uh, putting our speculation hats on. And again, I'll reiterate, I, I don't. This leak is not solid enough to me. It just seems like Nvidia worked on something. It doesn't mean that it's going to be in the next Switch. It doesn't mean there's another Switch coming out. Maybe they could just make the Wii U too. You know, yeah. <laughs> like it's just something Nvidia worked on. It's not Nintendo. We don't know anything about it. Yeah. And that that's 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 what if you've been wondering why the internet went crazy today about Nintendo Switch two rumors that was literally it is this line in uh in the dls line source code. Of, a line of code that most of them can't read <laughs> but yes. somebody <laughs> said this looks looks like it could be switch two yes oh, yeah, switch two switch two is real it's literally it's literally four letters hashtag Forbes is right yeah i don't know the, the, the I, another pro Another problem when we talk about Switch Pro stuff is that so many people were riding so hard that there was going to be a Switch Pro that they still can't admit they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they still have to pretend like it's still coming at, at right. any point. I don't know. Um. Anyway. So I, I don't we don't we don't know anything. All we're doing is just guessing like like the fans that we are. Nobody knows anything. Make yeah. sure you're weary when you're reading about these uh, Switch Pro rumors or whatever. Uh Renson in the chat says if it could hold 1080p 60 frames per second in all games, that would be a great upgrade. The problem is every console generation they boost the the hardware, but they also uh, uh 
the the games end up needing more resources <laughs> so like yeah so like the hardware hasn't been able to keep up with the software that these people have been have been using so like even yeah. the even the the new consoles the xbox series x and the and the playstation 5 we're not seeing much games 4k 60 frames per second we're seeing a lot of uh a lot 1080p. of stuff yeah. You know, like 1440 like like interlace and like all this weird stuff to like try or, or or like it'll be 4k but like you can't have hdr on and like all this weird stuff yeah uh that can't keep up so like may, this i'm sure this next switch will be capable of 1080p 60 um but i think all a lot of the games are going to be like 960p and like all this weird shit mm -hmm. i just wish 60 frames a second was the target instead of 4k I I hope that most games target a steady frame rate over over resolution. Yeah. Um, Silent Mongoose says, "I want the Switch Two to have a foldable screen and playable in landscape in portrait mode for DS slash 3DS support." I don't know about backwards compatibility yeah. for stuff like that. Nintendo has been uh, getting worse and worse at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And as for foldable screen, like that's a new technology and Nintendo generally doesn't dive right into like new technology. They always oh, like I, look I at like older technology. Yeah, because how long did it take them to do capacitive touchscreen on a system when like the DS, the 3DS and the Wii U were all like the old style where like you had to use a stylus in order to, so, for it to so, work properly. When I heard foldable screen, my brain went to DS. Like that kind of foldable screen, like with a hinge in it, uh, not necessarily yeah. like like a like the new like, like Microsoft the, the and Samsung phones. phones. Yeah, with with yeah. a literal like where the screen folds in half. That would be yeah. really cool, but I I didn't even. That would be expensive as hell. That would be yeah, because like those, those companies like... haven't even perfected that technology. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Nintendo is not usually. I don't. Nintendo is never the leader in 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 like. Uh, technical advancements you know they've never yeah. been that way motion controls no there are other companies have done motion controls way better they yeah. just made the games fun you know yeah i mean the only two times nintendo was like at the cutting edge of technology you could argue was the gamecube and the n64 and in both cases those were not the best selling systems of their generation they were a distant uh the 64 was a distant second and the gamecube was a distant third um a lot of people love the ds form factor the, the 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 two screens that fold like a clamshell uh i i, I mean, think that's a good form factor i i i think the switch I, I i'm sorry i think the ds light was a good form factor i think everything else was could have done with one screen like 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 i i can't think of a ds game that that couldn't have just been on one screen, you know, unless it's like a freaking like advanced war. No, advanced wars was on the Game Boy Advance, you know, like a strategy yeah. game where you have two screens. Otherwise, like Pokemon, I don't need my Pokemon to be on screen all of the time, you know. I mean, there there were games like Sonic Rush that took advantage of the two screens, where like you'd go back and forth between the two. Yeah, that was um, dumb though. <laughs> it like didn't do it in a cool way. It was like there's a oh, huge gap between the two screens. Right. That's it, like, that was the problem. It took it. it counted the gap yeah as, a, as part of the screen so like you could go missing in the gap yeah um yeah i'm trying to think of other games there were some games where you had to hold the ds sideways like a book like yeah. uh ninja brain age ninja guiding dual swords brain age um i don't know yeah i don't know how those would work but yeah m most ds games the touchscreen was a map and like you could put the map anywhere yeah, you don't and need it on with, screen all the time. You can just press start. I think start. with collections now, like the the Mega Man collection that's on the Switch, um, and I'm sure there's others that I can't remember, but like they're they're finding ways of putting DS games on other systems now. Yeah, I mean we've been doing it for years with emulators. Yeah, I think there's a space in the uh, AAA gaming market right now for. A very inexpensive, low-powered console, like a Game Boy Advance. Like, imagine right. if they just release like a fifty-dollar or even a hundred-dollar device that's 
that can only do like freaking like N64 graphics or something. Yeah. And they release it for like a, like 50 to 100 dollars and it's got Wi-Fi and you could just download games onto a micro SD card. It'll be like one of these retro emulators, but it's really tiny and feels like yeah. you're playing like a like a DS Lite that's got half of the screen. I feel like that would be there's a there's plenty of space for something like that, but I don't think they would ever do that. Well, I think I think there's space for it specifically from like one of the big three from Sony, from Microsoft, or from Nintendo, because mm-hmm. like you said, they're the market's flooded with them. But those are all third party aftermarket stuff, and they don't really have the same visibility as right. if like tomorrow if Sony came out and said, This is the PlayStation Portable Three. It's a hundred bucks. You just download all your PS1 and PS2 games on there, play it till your heart's content. Like, like, imagine if the analog pocket had the same sort of uh, online storefront as, like, imagine if the analog pocket had Steam on it, and you could just download yeah. uh, any indie game you want onto your analog pocket. Yeah. That would be like, like a mainstream console all of a sudden, you know. So, yeah. uh, I, I, again, I feel like having. Right now, it's really cheap to get a to get a device that's underpowered, that's like a Game Boy Advance or like an N sixty four type, uh, or even a original DS like power, and friggin' yeah. put a marketplace on it uh, that you could just download stuff to an SD card. That would be crazy. And and if you can link your account to your Switch, like imagine having like Shovel Knight on your Switch, and then like, oh, I gotta go. Let me pull out my little tiny little my little tiny man because that can run Shovel Knight. You know, like yeah. There's no reason why we shouldn't have something like that. Well, I mean, as you've seen, trying to uh, trying to be somebody who juggles multiple switches, Nintendo and the account system is yeah. garbage. Yeah, it's absolute trash. So yeah, my biggest uh, fear with Switch Two or whatever it winds up calling is my games won't be able to transfer over because Nintendo won't remember. It they they won't. <laughs> They're not gonna yeah. be. It's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be good. Um. Anyway, that's what we think about the next Switch. We think that uh, yeah. uh, you heard nothing. That's what we think. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't remember where we left off with these notifications here. Uh, oh, I left off with Spoopy Girl. That was so long ago. Uh, original Spiff, thank you for the three months. Uh, Portal Person, thank you for the Prime. McRib King, thank you for the two months. Fluffy Space Bears, thank you for the three months. Gamer Lady, thank you for gifting a sub. Uh, Monkey, thank you for the five months. Nyankus, thank you for the two years. Two years, boys, that is all. Well, thank you for the support. Thank you. Snooze Attacks, thank you for the 100 bits. Chris BX, thank you for the 43 months. The last level of Rubber Ross World accounted for 19% of all deaths experienced during upload, FYI. Fuck my life. <laughs> I'm on the last level of Ross's world. It's world yeah. eight. It's level 8-4 or whatever. And it's a boss yeah. rush. Uh, and and it's, I think it's all the Koopalings. <laughs> it sucks. Um, M. Lee Dawn, thank you for the five months. Noble Ruse, thank you for the 13 months. Looking forward to you taking a stab at Ross's endgame again soon. Fun times. I'm trying. Uh, Sue Costa, thank you for the six months. I fought the urge to buy the OLED at GameStop. It was made easier because they didn't have any white ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to get a regular old OLED. You can't get the yeah, I mean, neon colors. Yeah, because then how will people know it's an OLED just by looking at it? Exactly. They'll think you have the regular one. They'll think you're, you know, old news. A you don't peasant. want to be old news. Can't, yeah. Can't be like that. Khalil Jama, thank you for the 15 months. What up, guys? Hope you all having a good day. I'm having an all right day. How about you, Will? Why not? You got outside for being kids. thrown up on. Two kids. That's all I'll say. But Rusty Bagel, thank you for the four months. Subby Wubby, oh boy. Uh, taking Shape, thank you for the 15 months. 15 months of great content. Much love, guys. Thank you. Uh, Screamy Yelly Gamer, thank you for the 22 months. Love the streams. Fadudda, thank you for the 17 months. Thank you, guys. Will, I got a question for you. What do you think about yes, everything Bob. bagels? I like everything bagels. I think it's too much. I only need some of the things. <laughs> you know what? is weird to me what? i was in i was in the supermarket the other day and they sold 
I don't want to call it the spices, but like the everything seasoning, like just the seasoning for you, you to like put on stuff. I don't know what else you can put that on other than a bagel. And like, you can't even put it on a bagel. You have to like, you have to bake it, when, it into the bagel. Yeah. yeah. When you're making the bagel, like otherwise it's not going to stick to the bagel. The, the only thing I can think of is I've had everything bagel hummus. And that was okay. But other than that, like, what are you going to do with all? You're not going to eat everything bagel seasoning by itself. You're going to, you're going to be you're chewing gonna... on the hummus. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds not good. Um, also, what, what's your, what's your stance on a scooped out bagel? Just I say have, it's for bitches. I, I don't know. I... <laughs> No, it's for I people, know why people do it. It's for people who want to feel like they're doing something a little healthier. It's like getting a pizza with like pepperoni and shit and then being like, yeah, I'll put some basil on it. <laughs> I, I get why people do it. I, I physically would not be able to bring myself to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because then it's not a bagel. Then don't right. get a bagel. Yeah, you're, that's something. It's a flagel. Now, what's your yeah. stance on a flagel? Yeah, get, get a flagel. Flagels are fine. They still taste like bagels. I know that most of this chat doesn't know what a flagel is. I have to. I can't. Flagel I don't think I can is, Google it. There it is. It, it's literally a flat bagel. Flagel. So yeah, it's flat literally. And bagel, flagel. It's not scooped. Okay, so a scooped out bagel is when they take a normal bagel and they scoop all the insides out so it's like hollow inside. It's a waste of a bagel. Yeah. To really go good stuff. A flagel is just a smushed up flat bagel. It's like having a piece of bread. Anyway. Sam got me a everything bacon a bacon, egg, and cheese on an everything bagel that was scooped out. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'll have it. So I can't complain, okay. but I'm complaining. Uh, before it, before before we end uh bagel talk, I just want to say Everything bagels, I do like them, but they do not go with everything. Mm -hmm. You can't just put whatever you want on it. Like an everything bagel with like egg and bacon and whatnot feels wrong to me. Like an everything bagel is good with like certain types of cream cheese and butter. That's it. You, I just don't need all of that stuff. Like like a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel is 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 probably better on a plain bagel because you could experience the yeah, bacon egg and cheese exactly that, that's on an everything saying. bagel like, all you're getting is salt and pepper and poppy seeds in your teeth yeah an onion it's like it's like a garlic it's like weird it's it's not yeah and then it's yeah, scooped everything. out so you don't even get any bread it's like you just get the so crispiness like, yeah yeah it's it's weird so wait did he scoop it out himself because no. i don't know any bagel place that'll scoop out the bagel <laughs> i I think I had this conversation with Hannah. She asked me what a scooped out bagel was, and I was like, and she I think she said she wanted to try it, and I was like, you try it on Long Island. Do not ask yeah. for a scooped out bagel in New York City. You're going to get shot in the face. Yeah. None of these guys are going to be scooping your bagel out for you. And yeah. then that day, Sam was like, you got to try this scooped out everything bagel, bacon, egg, and cheese I can get from this place by my job. It's really good. And I was like, you are a psychopath. And then he gave it to me, yeah. and I was like, it was all right. I think it's just an option know, on like Grubhub to like have them scoop it out. Otherwise, I would I, never look a guy dead in his face and say, could you scoop that out for me? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know any bagel place that will willingly <laughs> scoop out the bagel for you. They're going like, to tell you that is something. Out. That is something that you have to do on your own, Karen. The you places, know, all of the places in Plainview will for sure scoop a, scoop a bagel out for you. Are you sure about that? I'm yes, pretty because sure because every, every woman over 50-year-old in Plainview is named Karen. <laughs> because... Plainview takes their bagels very seriously. Yeah, and and they know There's who like they're dealing with over there. Within a walking distance, you could for sure do it over there. I don't know if it's an option on Grubhub though. That might be a little different. Mm. I I gotta say, when I worked in the, in Manhattan, I was a little disappointed by the bagel situation. After coming from Long Island, I was a little disappointed. Really. I think they they take it they do take it pretty seriously in in the 
in Long Island. Yeah. In but I've Long had some Island? good bagels over here. God, how long have you been away? Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> in Long Island. <laughs> you cop, dude. <sighs> I'm a body snatcher. Yeah. Anyway, where are we? Uh, we're not talking about the leak anymore. Uh, go no, back and we're talking podcast. about missions and rewards being added to Nintendo Switch Online. Whoa, whoa! Uh, should I read the I, IGN article? I added a the... Nintendo Life article because that's pictures. Okay, so I'll read the Nintendo Life article. Uh, Nintendo has announced that missions and rewards have been added to Nintendo Switch Online. These elements can be accessed by navigating to the Nintendo Switch Online icon on your Switch home screen, then selecting the missions and rewards section. Here, you will find a list of available missions, which are related to, as Nintendo puts it, things you're probably already doing with your Nintendo Switch Online membership, like playing online or trying to or trying out the library of classic games. Ugh, excuse me. I'm doing it on uh, my Switch right now. Okay. Uh, Switch Online missions and rewards. So what do you? So what do you get for taking part in these missions? Platinum points. That's what you know. The useless points. These can be <laughs> They're not so useless anymore, I have to tell you. They are oh, they are pretty useless. Uh, these can be redeemed for items in my Nintendo store as usual, but also new member exclusive icon elements you can collect and put together to create a new user icon. Uh, switch online missions and rewards how to earn platinum points. It's easy. As explained above, you simply navigate to the Missions and Rewards section of the Nintendo Switch Online app on your Nintendo Switch console and look at the currently available missions. Complete these and you'll earn Platinum Points. Be aware that the time between completing mission, completing a mission and the points showing up in your account can sometimes be quite large, especially at busy times. If your points don't show up right away, check back later. Uh, Switch Online Missions and Rewards, how to unlock icon elements. Uh, what are icon elements, you ask? These are frames, characters, and background elements that you can use to customize your user icon on your Switch. This is the icon that appears when people see you're online, so there's a motivation to making yours as unique as possible. Wait, what's this uh, these bullshit? Okay, so I'm in the missions and rewards right now. Mm -hmm. um, these missions require an intense Switch Online membership. Yeah, duh. Um... Play software that supports online play. I did that. And it has a little stamp that says, I did that. Uh, use this application, Nintendo Switch Online. It says, I did that. Backup save data. It says, I did that. Play the original Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I did not do that. Are you fucking high? Wow. Maybe you haven't That's done my it most recently. Played. Maybe um, you haven't done I'll it freaking, recently I'll enough. freaking do it right now. Also, by the way, while we're at it, this is just me beating the level that Scootish has been trying to beat for like 14 <laughs> years now. I just want to make sure everybody knows that I'm better at Mario Maker than him. I don't think that was ever in question. Just have to, just have um, to put someone in. Let's see place, here. You know? uh, missions and rewards for March 2022. Each month will have a different theme and icon elements will be refreshed each and every week. At the moment, we've got Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and Super Mario Odyssey themed elements to earn. So you can earn yourself some exclusive Mario Odyssey and Animal Crossing badges. So yeah, the big deal is that you can make your own icon. You can you can like yeah. purchase like a badge using your uh, little platinum points, and you could purchase like a border and stuff. Not for yeah. real money; it's for your platinum points, which you earn. In a game. So, like, I guess it's like, it could be like a little status. It's like, it's like Nintendo made their own version of an NFT. <laughs> now I hate it even more. Where is the original Super Mario Brothers? There it is. Do I have to play a certain amount of time? I don't know. Just play the first level. How come I can't jump? Oh, I forgot the controls are weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm not doing this anymore. Here you go. <laughs> so did it, did it work or? I'm seeing. I got to load up into the, into the stuff. Oh, oh, it just like gave me more platinum points. I think. Oh, there you go. Uh, uh, mission status. Hey, I did it. I did nice. four out of four. 
can I show that QR code? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kate McCat says it's like the useless steam points that you use for borders and profile cover backgrounds. Yeah, kind of like that. Missions you can complete with Nintendo Switch Online. Even without a Nintendo Switch Online membership, there are lots of ways to earn platinum points for missions available at MyNintendo.com. Oh, the QR code, I think, just opens MyNintendo.com. Okay. So here's the rewards that you can get currently right now. Uh, I, I guess these are just icons. You can get a little uh, Captain Toad. Yeah. And here's a little borders you can get. Oh, how cute. I could just totally have screenshotted that. Can't you just make a screenshot your freaking uh, icon? No, no you, you can't, can't just make a screenshot of it because it's not a unique experience. If I took a screenshot and made it my own, icon, there would be people you making don't penises own in Mario Maker. The screenshot, man. Oh, it's not on the blockchain. That's right. Yeah. Can I buy the N64 controller right now? From this? No. No, you can't. <laughs> so that's really it. That's really all that they did. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to make it a little special icon for yourself, there you go. Go ahead. Have a fun I thought time. this was going to be something cool. I thought this was going to be Nintendo's step towards finally implementing like an achievement system or like a trophy system. That's what I thought. I mean, uh, it, it kind of is a little bit. Kind of is, but it's also like not <laughs> i saw somebody tweet about it and they were going nuts over it so it made yeah. me really excited about it and now that i just tried it i was like you know what it's not that cool it would be nice if there was an achievement system it would be nice if you could uh convert platinum points into gold points because those are the ones i really fucking want i don't want to earn up all these platinum points to get i don't know i don't even know if I I do. I like getting the little notebooks and stuff. Like a I like little that. notebook. I like for that. Free plus five dollar shipping. I li I like that stuff. I'm gonna look at there at my Nintendo store right now. I like I like that stuff too. I almost bought the Pokemon cable ties because I had enough points for it, but cable it's like five dollars shipping, and I'm like, that's too much for two cable ties. I'll pay five dollars. I bought a pack of like a a. Thousand pack of Velcro cable ties for five bucks. My Nintendo store rewards. Here they are, the cable ties. Four hundred platinum yeah. points. What do you do? You, how many do you get? You only get one each. One of each. Oh, this is a mask tie. I thought they were cable. Mask ties. cable strap. Oh. So you can use it as a cable. Oh, it is for it is a cable strap, but I think it's also for masks. Like you could fold a mask up. Yeah. Uh, a three year jour journal book. Yeah, that's what some keychains. They got a little. Oh, that is that. Yeah. Is it just a notebook? And I have. Yeah. I might want and that. I have the regular Mario Luigi notebook. That one's cool. I want that one. The Mario five Luigi bucks. one. I pay five bucks for that. I don't care. I don't have eight hundred points though. I gotta do. I gotta do more of these uh, uh, missions. I think How they. Do update, I have so many points. It it looks like they update once a week. Yeah, I think I spent all my I'm points like, on dumb shit. I'm like swimming in points. Like I don't understand how I get so many of them. Give me points. My Nintendo game I card case. No, these are dumb. I legitimately oh wish there oh, was a Oh, this is actually pretty cool. So this is a game card case, and it's it's just a Nintendo Switch game case, but on the yes, inside, there's is... eight games. Yeah. Like you so put you can eight hold... games in it. Yes. So that's, that's good, like, if you're traveling, or if you go to a con and you buy loose games. That's kind of sick. I kind of want to... I, yeah. I don't even have physical games, but I want that. That's cool. 600 points. I have enough. Anyway. Um, do you, have, you were about to say something, and then I think I cut you off. I, if I was, I forgot. All right, cool. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Check it out. Mine, uh, it's on your Switch. You go to the little Nintendo Switch online thing. Um, anyway, here's some more. Just Nintendo doing good, doing good work out there. <laughs> You know, Nintendo saying, fans, we love you, we hear you, and we got you. Yeah. 
And because we love you so much, Smash Brothers has been pulled from Evo 2022. Oh, yes. Yep, you bastards. <laughs> uh, although it's one of the most popular and important franchises, why did my screen decide to jump back? Oh, stop moving! Stop moving, computer! I'm trying to do a show. Although it is one of the most important franchises for the fighting game crowd, Super Smash Brothers won't be making an appearance at the company's biggest event of the year. Uh, since 20, since 2007, we've seen historic Smash Brothers moments created at Evo's events. Evo, which is owned by Sony, uh, said in a tweet, uh, we are saddened that Nintendo has chosen not to continue that legacy with us this year. Evo 2022 will be the first full edition of the event since 2019, which featured a Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament in place of the Smash Brothers Melee Tournament. The 2020 event was canceled following accusations of abuse that were levied against Evo co-founder and then CEO Joey C Cellular. Uh, Evo 2021 took place as an online-only affair due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Evo has a long history with uh, Smash Brothers, uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee, in particular, has been a popular has been a popular part of the event for several years. As Kotaku notes, uh, Nintendo, which tries to control how other organizations use its games, failed in its attempt to prevent Evo organizers from live streaming the 2013 Melee tournament. Melee was added uh, to that year's event following a charity drive. This doesn't exactly mean the end of Nintendo-backed Smash Brothers esports, though. In November, Nintendo and Panda Global announced plans to run their own competitive Smash series. The company has a partnership with Play Versus, which runs Smash Brothers Ultimate and Splatoon 2 High School Varsity Esports Leagues. As for what games will actually be present at EVO 2022, we won't need to wait long to find out. EVO will, Evo will host a Twitch stream on March 8th to reveal more details about this year's event, which will take place in Las Vegas. So uh, I forgot that Evo was purchased by PlayStation. That happened in mm -hmm. March, or that was announced in March of last year. So yes. <laughs> this is the first Evo since then. Yes. And uh, I well, it's the first in-person one since then. Didn't they? Did they do it online last year? They did it online last year. Smash wasn't in it though, right? I think it was. I think they took it out because it was online. All right, let me just double check that. Because, uh, because yeah, it's got shitty online. Yeah, it's got <laughs> shitty online. Um, because I didn't even think about that. That would be a good reason for not a good reason, but it would be a reason for Nintendo to back out. Why would they uh work yeah. with PlayStation? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time. They are partnering with Panda Global to make their own tournament. Uh, yeah. I'm a little worried about that. I mean, Panda Global does good stuff for the Smash Brothers community, but I'm a little worried that Nintendo is going to do some dumb shit. That Nintendo is going to like just because Panda Global is such a a big deal in uh, Smash Brothers esports. I'm afraid that Nintendo will kind of sully that and try to do like yeah. weird shit. Well, what happened with the controllers that Panda Global was making? Didn't so like something the, happen with that? So they announced the controllers, and they also announced the uh, the uh, the partnership with Nintendo around the same time. And I was like, "That's weird. Something's weird about that." Because like, yeah, they're partnering with Nintendo for the for the tournaments. I'm sure these controllers are not officially licensed, <laughs> right? And uh, then they really quickly canceled the whole thing they 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 uh they gave everybody their uh reward money back they they they, they said um right they said uh they're going to have to delay it and they don't feel comfortable holding on for to people's money for that long and i thought that was really uh good of them to do that cuz they very easily could have just kept the money and delayed it further but instead they want to yeah. iron out some things until they can finally do it um okay. who knows what that means but it was already going to come out at the end of this year. So it was already going to be like a really long time until they made it. So it's going to be even longer than that, probably. Yeah. Maybe they decided to cancel it because they're working with Nintendo and it, it might not even be possible to make the controller anymore. But right. uh, we don't we don't really know what happened. 
So last year at Evo, the games were Guilty Gear Strive, Mortal Kombat 11, Street Fighter 5, uh, Tekken 7, and Skullgirl Second Encore. Yeah. So they were all games that were either PlayStation exclusive or available on PlayStation systems. I think that in, I, there it was a big deal that Smash wasn't part of it last year. It's possible right. Nintendo didn't want it as part last year because of the online situation. Right. But now it's going to be in person. Doesn't really. Yeah. There's no excuse. Matter. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find an article from last year, but all the articles are pulling up from this year. Yeah. On Nintendo response to Sony's acquisition of Evo and Smash no. Ultimate involvement. That was last year. Uh, Nintendo has enjoyed engaging with fans at past Evo tournaments and w wish the show organizers the best with their new venture. We will continue to <laughs> access Evo and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Smash Bros. tournament activity. That was last March. They said that when PlayStation yeah. uh, acquired Evo. Uh, I mean, it says that uh, Evo states that the Sony ownership of competition will not affect its ability to include events uh, for non-PlayStation games. But as we saw in 2021, they were all PlayStation games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure PlayStation doesn't care. They're like, do whatever you want. But Nintendo might look at that and be like, nah, we don't want to work with you. Although, I, I, again, because like... Oh, no... Uh, Sony and Microsoft have published games on Nintendo. Nintendo has not gone the other way. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? But I do think, you know, the partnership with Panda Global and possibly other factors are, you know, Nintendo is the type of company that would take its ball, go home, and do something on their own. Yes. <gasps> yeah, I'm again, I'm worried about... Uh... Smash esports with uh, like like Nintendo needs to be involved, and everybody's been wanting that. And Nintendo is yeah. now finally involved, and I'm very skeptical about what they can do for it because everybody's already done such a great job by their by themselves. I'm worried yeah. that having having Big Daddy Nintendo around might put some weird restrictions on stuff. Yeah, because everybody set the standard. The mm -hmm. standard has been set. Everybody knows what a fighting game tournament is supposed to be. But Nintendo is the type of company where when somebody sets the standard, Nintendo looks at the standard, breaks it in half, and tries to put it back together using uh, rubber cement. Right. <laughs> because it's better that way. Uh, yeah, I give up trying to look at, uh, yeah, look at the games. Um, Anyway, let's read some notifications here. Okay. Um, oh, oh. Also, hold on. In 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 response to this, um, Evo not having uh, Smash Brothers. Um, uh huh. Uh, Ludwig, the streamer, said that uh -huh. uh, he's doing his own Smash tournament. Uh, <laughs> and he he's a he's an old uh, like melee player. He used to do tournaments and stuff. Right. Uh, and he's been talking about wanting to to, to do a full on in person uh, Smash Brothers tournament for a long time, so uh, right. he's gonna dump a bunch of money into that, and probably that'll probably happen. Uh, pretty, we'll probably hear about that relatively soon, I think. And then there's there also uh, there's also a bunch of other tournaments. I saw people saying that they weren't gonna go to Evo and they were gonna go to Smash Con or something. So uh, mm -hmm. there's plenty of places you can get your Smash Brothers content. Anyway. Uh, where did I leave off? Uh, uh rye bread uh, with five months. Everything bagels go hard, but egg everything is really where it's at. Everything seasoning needs pretzel salt. Trust me, you gotta try it. I work at a bakery. Hope y'all are having a good night. Where do I get that? Do I have to make yeah. it? <laughs> pretzel salt is just salt, but big. Am I wrong? Yeah. There's three main types of salt. There's table salt, there's kosher salt, and there's sea salt. Lose when you lose. Oh, sea salt. 
<laughs> so I don't know what pretzel. I know what pretzel salt is, but that's not one of the three types of salt that you usually cook with. Right. I don't know what that is categorized as. Maybe kosher salt, but I don't know. Ske- S- Skeetle juice is rock. That's isn't that like a little clear? That's like sea salt. Anyway, where am I? Dark type says 18 <laughs> with the 18 months. Happy 18 months. Love you guys. Also, fuck Putin. Prayers for Ukraine. Agreed. Yes. Uh, he also gives us 100, uh, 200 bits and says, guys, this is just the first step towards NNFT, Nintendo NFT. I'm just saying. Other name for it, my Nintendo NFT, exclamation point, added for happiness. If this future comes true, I want you, if you're a mod, ban yourself. If you're not, Bob, make him a mod so that he can ban himself. <laughs> he can do exclamation point seppuku in the chat and it will kill him. There you go. You could do that in the chat right now. Uh, Ackmeister, thank you for the nine months. 3 a.m. here, just dropping by for some sweet prime. Bye. Thank you for dropping by. Dropping you, that bye. prime now, subscription. Now go to bed. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> if you have Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch and you support this channel f- f- without spending any money. And we appreciate it. I just you, saw... Uh, no, keep going. You, you you all have homework, all you listeners. You have to... If you have Amazon Prime, you got to link it to your Twitch account. Go over to twitch.tv slash Wolfden and, and connect your account and drop that Prime sub because it helps us out. Also, if you've never listened to us on iTunes before, go over to iTunes, type up, type in Wolfden Podcast, and just drop a listen on this episode. And also, thank you. Uh, I also just want to add, since we're talking about Prime, uh, I don't know if you saw Bob, but uh, Beats Forte, friend of the show, tweeted at us, Amazon officially launched Luna, so it's out of beta, and they added more tiers, including Prime Gaming, games that you can play for free with just your Amazon Prime subscription. So does that mean I don't need to pay anything extra? Correct. Does that, does that mean I can just cloud game with my Prime subscription? Yes. So that means you can just right now go to Amazon and you can boot up Devil May Cry 5 and play it. Holy shit. Fogs! Fogs is on there. Yep. You not available. Play it now through... <laughs> Why is it saying not available? Prime Gaming. Play uh-huh. free with Prime. Play a rotating selection of games with Prime membership. Not available. Huh. Is it because you have a business account? No, that shouldn't Add matter. Prime. Amnesia. <laughs> How do I play Fox? Not available. Account type not I- supported. Log in with an U... Oh, my, uh, maybe I'm on a VPN. Uh, like, oh, oh, business, I... teen, and child accounts are not supported. I have Prime. Ooh, what am I gonna do? How? how, how I, I just, I just, I just went in and it says Devil May Cry Five. Play with Luna. Start your trial. How do I? How do I? Lo- it says business Prime. How do I? Lo- oh wait, I don't even have business Prime. Boost your business savings with all unlimited free shipping on eligible orders. I have Prime. Do I not have Prime? I buy so much oat milk from you. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some research on this. I'm gonna have to pray on this. <laughs> <laughs> that cowboy bum, thank you for the Prime subscription. I'm gonna be mad at Amazon Prime after this. Fall in Order was last month. I don't even. I don't even own that game. Can I get Amazon yeah, Luna is... on my Steam Deck? There you go. Does it work on Android? It's got to, right? Because it isn't Kindle Android uh, based. Yeah, I think it should. I forgot. It like the the preview page said works on like uh, properly supported Mac and Windows browsers and whatnot because then maybe i could play it on my odin 
There you go. I got a lot of toys, Will. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Uh, all right. Next up on the docket here, more Nintendo. We have we're we're not done. Uh, Nintendo b is joining the is joining the trend of big triple the big three game console companies buying yeah, that's developers right. for and big it bought money. a big one. It bought you ready. It bought SRD Co Limited. If you've never heard of them before, I don't blame you. The Tokyo-based studio will be purchased for an undisclosed sum and become part of Nintendo from April 1st of this year. SDR has assisted Nintendo in the development of numerous games, most recently including Animal Crossing New Horizons and Zelda Breath of the Wild for Switch, plus Mario Kart Tour for smartphones. The studio's partnership with Nintendo oh. extends back decades to the NES days of Donkey Kong and Super Mario Brothers. It has been involved in some of Nintendo's more more experimental projects such as last year's Game Builder Garage and the Switch cardboard accessory product line Nintendo Labo. SDR will be the second studio acquisition in just over a year from Nintendo, a company not known for buying external developers. Back in January of 2021, Nintendo announced it would purchase Vancouver-based Luigi's Mansion Studio Next Level Games, which is now making the next Mario Strikers title. Earlier this month, Nintendo's boss, uh, Shintaro Furukawa, told investors not to expect any acquisitions which did not possess Nintendo DNA already. It's fair to say SDR passed this test. So, so Nintendo has a weird... Nintendo has a lot of developers that work with them on first-party stuff, their big AAA yes. stuff, but they're not first-party studios. They just work on Nintendo stuff. Yeah, and it's... most they're second party studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh like for example, one of the big ones, Sora. S Sora made Smash Brothers. Yeah. And I don't think Nintendo owns them. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> so like there's a lot of studios in Japan that just are more than happy to work with Nintendo. They just have such a good yeah. relationship with Nintendo and Nintendo I... doesn't own them or anything. I don't think Nintendo owns HAL Laboratories. Yeah. You know, the people who make Kirby. The people you know, where Satoru Iwata came from. I don't think so either. It doesn't look like it, according to the Wikipedia. I don't see a parent company yeah. list. Um, so, so, yeah. N N Nintendo doesn't really need to buy these companies. Uh, there's two reasons why I would think they would buy this company. One is to bail them out of something. <laughs> like maybe they were like really hurting financially and Nintendo needed to take yeah. over. And two, they worked on Mario Kart Tour for smartphone. I think they're using a lot of the work that was done on Mario Kart Tour for the Mario Kart DLC. Right. Because people are saying that the graphics look identical to what they look like in Tour. So... Uh, that's a possibility. Maybe they need to work closer with, uh, with SRD on, on stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's, it's, this is really like a non, like a non thing. Like, it's not a big deal that, that, that this yeah. happened. I mean, it's a kind of, it's something that Nintendo doesn't it, usually do. Yeah. But, it, but, it's a big deal in a sense that Nintendo spent money to acquire a studio, but this is not. Microsoft buying Activision. This is not Sony buying Bungie. Yeah, this would be like this would be like Microsoft buying Bungie back when Halo Three came out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So it's uh. Yeah, it's or, or it's, it's, this is it's like a weird when Sony news. bought. This is like when Sony bought Insomniac. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just assuming that Sony already owned Insomniac. Yes, exactly. Anyway, uh, next news. Uh, hey, there was a bunch of Pokemon stuff that happened. Yay, Pokemon. Well, right off the bat, what do you think about these starter Pokemon? I think they look like starter Pokemon. <laughs> I think they look like a, 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 a fake leak. That's what I think it looks like. <laughs> but that's right. I feel like that every time they release uh, starter Pokemon. It, it's, it's weird... 
that at, we've reached the point where starter Pokemon can look generic. <laughs> but these honestly look like generic Pokemon. So, so there, I I saw this tweet. Uh, this is by uh, Barbie underscore E four. It says Sprigatio. Spri- I can't read this name. The artwork for this cat is driving me insane. Always flip your artwork. If you draw stuff, it's nice to flip it or put it in a mirror or something so you can see the reverse. It gives you like a fresh perspective on the art you're drawing. And this uh-huh. showed a flip version, and I was like, when I saw this, I was like, all right, dude. Everybody sees things differently. This is, like, not an issue that we should be worried about. And then I scroll down, and I see this, and it shows that, like, one of the eyes is, like, super wonky. <laughs> like, they like they drew it weird. Yeah. Maybe that is why it looks like a knockoff. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, obviously, so, yeah. that's not what it's going to look like in the game. It's just a drawing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, go go, go ahead. Anyway, yeah, the ninth generation of Pokemon games were revealed in the Pokemon Presents live stream. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will hit the Nintendo Switch this year. Uh, and, and it's set in a new region that seems to be inspired by Mediterranean Europe. Um, we got a look at g- the game's... Yeah. <laughs> Our mother's gonna love this. Finally, an <laughs> Italian Pokemon game. No, it's it, it. Everybody's saying it's Spanish. Well, I'm sorry, but Sprigatio is an Italian name. That is an Italian cat. <laughs> All right, Sprigatio. There better be some That's fucking. Amigo. Then why isn't it Pokemon spaghetti and Pokemon meatballs? <laughs> it should be. There's got to be at least one region. Where it's nothing but gangsters and assholes and wife beaters. <laughs> hey, yo, you want to step it to me? <laughs> All right, Charizard, show this, show this guy what's up. Hey, who, 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 who was the who was the leader of the of Team Rocket? What the hell was it? Uh, G, G, Giovanni. Giovanni. Yeah. Giovanni. Yeah. Where is he from? He's either from go. Brooklyn or Gio- he's from Italy. Yes. And just so we're clear, we can make these Italian stereotype jokes because we are Italian. Our you saw what Will just did with his hands. Italian. Yes. <laughs> every You're not allowed to do it. We're we allowed have, to do it. Every family event we've ever gone to looks exactly like the wedding scene from The Godfather. So do <laughs> not come for us. Anyway, your starter Pokemon are the Grass Cat Sprigatio, the Fire Croc Fiococo, and the Water Duckling <laughs> Quaxley. Wait, hold on. In the chat, it says, uh, Red End says, it's Spree Gatito, Little Cat in Spanish. I am rejecting your reality and substituting in my own. Anyway, <laughs> Game Freak develops Scarlet and Violet will be even more open world than the recent Pokemon Legends Arceus with towns blending seamlessly into wilderness with no borders, your outfit will vary depending on which game you play. They'll add Pokemon Home capability after their release, so you'll be able to bring Pokemon you caught in the previous games into the new region. Uh, February 27th is Pokemon Day, the 26th anniversary of Red and Green's original Japanese release. The only interesting thing about this is that in the description of the video, it says, Welcome to the open world of Pokemon. So it's an open world Pokemon game. Yes. Otherwise, this game looks like shit. <laughs> like, like, like. All right, I, 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 for years I've been saying it doesn't matter if the graphics are bad as long as the game is fun. And Pokemon, I'm not playing for the graphics. I just want the cute characters. You know, and, yeah. and, and the cute characters make me want to play the game. I am over the cute characters. I'm done. <laughs> They keep releasing these games and they're not getting better. They keep have this weird bullshit about it that is frustrating. And this doesn't look like it's any better than the Pokemon games we've been getting already. It looks worse than Arceus. And everybody loves Arceus for how different it is. And this looks like Sword and Shield, but instead of an open part, it's the whole world is open. I think we're going to have to wait and see just how open this open world is. Like, what do they mean by, like, a truly open world? Sure, they could. They because, could. It could be a bait and switch. It could just be. They could exactly. say open world and it ends up being 
like a weird Monster Hunter style where it has to load the s specific parts. Yeah. So, like, if, if it's like a Breath of the Wild type of, I hate, I know, I know, mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild type open world. But if it's like that, or hell, if it's like a GTA style open world, then we could be seeing something here. If it's just like the regular Pokemon, but there's no loading between towns, then it, like it's we just got this game two years ago. What I hate is we don't, that we don't need it that soon. This trailer makes it seem like epic and like and like grand, and and they yeah. give you freaking Wii graphics, <laughs> <laughs> like. Like I, I look at this, look at this rectangular ass like like uh like laundry that's that's on that's waving on the yeah like it's and again I don't think graphics are a big deal but I think it's indicative of of the half assedness that we've gotten in the last couple of Pokemon games I'm not I I'm feel not like about it at this point there are two excuses either they're lazy which I don't want to say they're lazy, or this has to be an aesthetic choice. Like, they are choosing to make this game look two generations behind. <laughs> for whatever reason. I, like, I those are the only two things I, reasons I can think of. Again, I don't care if they make it look like it's two generations behind. I care that there's all this weird, dumb shit that makes it feel like when you're playing the game, there's this stuff that makes it feel like they just didn't care about the game at all. Right. Like dialogue that just droves on and on and on. They have to mash a through, um, all these weird, like, uh, like the whole game is just UI elements. And there's all these yeah. weird, like the, the way that, that everything's like structured and, 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 and the way you have to go through things just to like, uh, just to catch a Pokemon. It's, it's, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not great. Yeah. I always have to think when I'm playing a Pokemon game, I always have to think <laughs> where's the start button. Cause it's not start. Yeah. And that's weird. It's a lot <laughs> of those things. Just, they add up. It's a lot of little things. Next time I play a Pokemon yeah. game, when I play this game, because I'm going to play it, I'm going to write down every single little thing that frustrates <laughs> me. And then I'll read them all off in a list. Because it's hard to articulate why these games frustrate me so much. Because there's so many things that seem like not a big deal, and then you put them all together, and you're like, this is, f I hate this. You know what I don't like about these games already? What? Their name. Spaghetti and Meatball. Like why what no seriously why scarlet and violet why those are the two most random ass colors you could have picked mm -hmm. usually when they name pokemon games they're diametrically opposed things or they're fairly relative things like red is the opposite of blue sword is different from a shield the sun is the opposite of the moon a diamond and a pearl, they're not opposites, but they're two clearly distinct things. Scarlet and violet are literally just random ass colors, <laughs> and violet contains elements of red, which is another name for scarlet. People in the chat are saying it's a play on red and blue. Then why not use it? Violet is, a, is purple. It's literally <laughs> a combination of red and blue. Violet there is a different color. It's a different color. Don't. It's its own spectrum on the on on the okay. on the Roy G. Biv. If I were to go find my Crayola crayons and I pull out the purple, it will say in parentheses violet. So don't with me. <laughs> don't. With and me. Crayola knows all. Yes. If 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 they're going with a play on red and blue, it should have elements of red and blue. It should it should it should. I'm a Gen Oneer. Okay, it should make me feel like I want to play this yeah. game. I have a virus threat protection. Help. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, anyway, I am not thrilled about this. People seem to take to these uh, uh, knockoff looking starter Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because people like cats and there's a cute cat. I don't like cats. Yeah. If that was a cute dog, I... maybe I'd like these starters. Well, Wyatt Stanak has a great bit and I agree with him. I love kittens. I think they're so cute. I fucking hate cats. <laughs> I agree. 
Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I could care less about the starters. I want to know the final evolutions of those starters because that's where you spend most of the time when you're playing a Pokemon game. And they never tell you yeah. the final evolutions until the fucking game comes out or like a day before yeah. the game comes out. So that's how we like, uh, what was it? Sun and Moon when we had Litten, this like kind of awesome fire cat. And yeah. then the game comes out and you realize it, his final form is Incineroar. It's, it's fucking Brock Lesnar cat. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not excited about this. Yeah. I didn't. I'm one of the few people who didn't like Arceus, and uh, and and this is even a departure from that. <laughs> so I don't. I I'm not. I'm not. I'm not thrilled. But I'll play it. I'll play it and I'll give it a shot. We'll see how long I play it for. I'm looking up types of blue that they could have <laughs> named this instead of violet because violet is purple and you can't change my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've see. I see. Uh, what was it? Navy blue, ocean blue, uh, azure. If you wanted to keep the Mediterranean, azure theme would be cool. Yeah, exactly. Denim. <laughs> Denim would be terrible. That'd be a bad name. I would say the the one that makes the most sense it's in my mind is cobalt. Cobalt. That blue. would be cool. So that would Charlotte be good. Cobalt. The the only reason why that would be a problem though is because. Sonic the Hedgehog's official color is cobalt blue. Oh, no one cares. <laughs> no one playing this game has even ever heard of Sonic. <laughs> True. Uh, there's more Pokemon news. I don't even yes. really care, though. I don't. How much of this do we need to read? Like, I nothing mean, there's even gonna happened. Be... Yeah, there's going to be... Wait, did, did I put the thing in for the right... No, this is the wrong one. <laughs> This is from January 9th. Me? January 9th, 2020. I was like, I was like, Sword and Shield DLC. What? This is, yeah, this is what I get for Googling uh, Pokemon Direct announcements. They're, I think they're, the other they're adding, uh, they're adding friggin', uh, what do you call it? They're adding a Alolan Pokemon to Pokemon Go. Yes. There's a DLC uh, to Cafe Mix where there's the friggin' Seagull guy can make deliveries and stuff. And there's an event where you can get a shiny Piplup. In Cafe Mix, there's a, there's DLC for Arceus called Daybreak. It'll cause more Pokemon outbreaks in the wild and add new battles to the training ground. Yeah, that'll get me to play it. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Uh, oh, and there's there's a new a new big fifty dollar Pokemon coming to Pokemon Unite, and. Um, they're adding stuff to Pokemon Masters, which I actually liked Pokemon Masters. I played a little bit of that. I actually liked Pokemon Masters. Uh, but anyway, I'll I'll check out Pokemon Spain when it comes out. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, gonna keep my hopes up though. I'll I'll uh, wait to see what you have to say about it. Did you play uh, Arceus at all? No. Don't I don't think you'd like it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Camaro I didn't in the chat hate. says, Bob doesn't like games much anymore, it seems. It, he's right. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. I really just shit on everything now. Yeah, that's what happens when you've been doing YouTube for as long as you have. You just hate the thing you're covering so much. You know what I love now that I, that I stopped doing YouTube full time? What? Comic books. Oh, I good. I love comic books. <laughs> okay. No, I hate video games. You know what I play now? I've been, you know, what? I've been playing games. You know what I've been playing? Yeah, I've been playing Burning Rangers on my Ein Odin. It's pretty. I good. saw you tweet about that. It's pretty good. It runs like shit on the Ein Odin, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I've been playing Valorant. A lot of Valorant. <laughs> it is very good. I like it very yeah. much. It is very fun. Um, haven't been playing Warzone too much. Games gone off. It's gone down the tubes. Um, yeah. and I'm trying to get a little further in, uh, Forza Horizon. It's a good game. Uh, so and that's it. I brought, I brought my analog pocket with me to the mm -hmm. hospital when my son was born mm -hmm. and I was playing around with it. And the game I played the most on it, Gremlins are you 2. ready? No, it, it, it is a will game though. That's uh, the game you were Kim playing Pop when I was born. Yes. I was playing Kim possible Two: Draken's demise for the game boy advance. The fuck my analog pocket. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> look it up. This game won IGN's 
most surprise, surprisingly good game for the Game Boy in the year it was released because it is a very surprisingly good game. It is an action platformer where the platforming is the stuff that matters in the game, not how many villains you can kill and how fast you can get to the end. Kim Possible 2? Good stuff. Kim Possible 2. I have all three of them, but I've only played the second one so far. I'm going to uh, acquire it. <laughs> I'm going to acquire it can, right now. I can help you with that. I have I have it already the way you're going to acquire it. I will. Don't Don't worry. Okay. Um I'm already acquiring it. Uh Hannah says I would play the fuck out of that. There you go. Well, I'm I'm acquiring it, so you'll have you, it. You want me to I also have I have all three Game Boy Advance games. I also have the PS2 game. I have the to PS2 say, game is great. I played Ninja Five O, which is also a critically acclaimed Game Boy Advance game. Yeah, uh, not good. <laughs> not a good game. I don't know what oh, the fuck on. everybody's on about. It's 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 like it's like a what's that game? It's like Rolling Thunder, except it's on oh. the Game Boy Advance. It's not good. Oh, that's disappointing. Because yeah, Ninja Five O. They said it's the best. You know what I think the problem is? Because we got a Revenge of Shinobi game on the Game Boy Advance, and it was Garbo. It wasn't yeah, it even was the real good. Revenge of Shinobi. And so we finally got a ninja game on the Game Boy Advance. So everybody was just like, yay. Yeah, I yeah, I wasn't I wasn't thrilled yeah. about it. Um Oh wait, I have it already. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Kim Possible game already. <laughs> that means it's on that means it's on here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, what's the next news we got going on Steam right deck now? Steam Deck reviews. Steam Deck reviews. Okay, they've been more or less positive. Uh, everything's been pretty positive. I did a stream the other day where I, um, watched a couple of reviews. Yeah. Uh, you want to just read a couple quotes from, from here? and Just, like, pick some uh, random ones, and, and I'll give my general thoughts. Yeah, uh, here's from Polygon, uh, Editor-in-Chief Chris Plant. The Steam Deck shines as an ultra-powerful Switch. I enjoyed the Steam Deck most when I treated it like a powerful Switch instead of as a hybrid PC. I love the Switch because it makes video games approachable to more people than ever before, allowing them to easily enjoy games at their convenience without any additional investment of time or space. No TV required, hell no living room required. And I still believe that for newcomers and people unfamiliar with PC gaming, Nintendo's device remains the best starting point for this hobby. But for people who already have a Steam library or are eager to dip their toes into the waters of PC gaming, the Steam Deck already feels like a legitimate alternative. It builds on the Switch's pitch of playing anywhere and everywhere because of how my games and save files aren't tied to a console. They live in the cloud, following me wherever I can access Steam, from my Steam Deck to my gaming PC to my work laptop and wherever else I want to them in the future. I got Kim Possible playing it right now. There you go. I'm telling you, man. IGN's uh, most surprise, surprisingly good game for whatever year it came out in. Oh my god, there's like what you... full motion video. 2004. Yeah, man. Oh my god, it kind of feels like Aladdin. <laughs> That's that Disney magic. Is your health a, a lipstick? <laughs> no. Uh, so right now, from what I can see, uh, your health is in the top left, obviously. Oh, it's a big the man. Lipstick, yeah, the lipstick uh, helps you, like, when you see potholes, you throw it, and it, like, helps create, like, a trampoline for you to jump on. Oh, like that. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. done with this game. I'll play it later. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you it makes you think. <laughs> so from what I've anyway. seen from the Steam Deck, uh Digital Foundry did a whole video. Love Digital yeah. Foundry. I use the videos are usually really long and very technical, and I usually like mentally check out about halfway through. One of the poignant things they said though, it is more comfortable than a Nintendo Switch. That made my brain explode because this thing looks like a behemoth yeah in fact uh they don't have it here because i actually watched the end gadget review of it and their reviewer jessica condit said that it is not as comfortable to hold as the switch is because she has smaller hands so she has to hold it a certain way and like it's heavier 
So she had to constantly like hold it in her lap and look down at it. So that's what I think happened. I think Digital Foundry was playing it on a desk. Like, yeah. So you're playing it with your with your hands uh, resting on something. And I think it was PC yeah. Gamer. In their review, they said they had to rest it on a pillow or something because it was so heavy. Um, yeah. And that's that seems like the 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 answer but also uh i think dave 2d in his review said that uh it was very comfortable um not like light years more comfortable than the switch but uh it was pretty comparable he said um yeah i'll also say today i was playing mario maker in portable mode i never do that uh <laughs> but it was very hard to play that game in portable really? mode after playing it on a fight pad um, yeah, playing in it, I was playing a really hard level in portable mode, and it was freaking hard to get like really short button presses. It was really hard. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, after playing the I uh, no, after playing the Ein Neo, no fuck these names, the I Neo. <laughs> after playing that, it made me kind yes. of understand why they made the buttons on the Steam Deck the way that they are, how they're all on the top, because the yeah. device is heavy. Holding the top of it keeps it balanced a little better because the uh, this thing, mm -hmm. the Aya uh, Neo. If you want to hit the thumbstick, you kind of hold it in a weird way, and it doesn't really doesn't really feel that great because of how heavy the device is. Uh, yeah. So I kind of understand why they did that with the Steam Deck. Otherwise, a lot of these reviews are kind of summarizing it by saying that. Uh, it's got a lot of unfinished uh, software, but the games that it can play run great. And I've seen a lot of people having a very easy time uh, emulating stuff with it. Yes. So there is uh, just a straight up Linux desktop. You can close or minimize the Steam OS and just use Linux like a desktop. And there is a Linux storefront called i think discover and you can just go there and type in retroarch or uh uh, uh moopin or whatever emulator you want to run whatever game and then you can just load up your n64 emulator and on top of that you can go into the steam os and add moopin or whatever emulator you want as a game or app in steam so you could open it using the steam os Mm -hmm. and you can load all of your your ROMs on an SD card and play them that way. It seems super easy. It looks like it runs Nintendo Switch emulators too. So you can run some really powerful stuff on there. That seems exciting. I can't see myself taking the Steam Deck around with me over something like an Odin. Yeah. <laughs> this thing was $100 well, cheaper and way smaller and more convenient. Yeah. But at the same time, like, oh, maybe if you can throw the Steam Deck, because the Steam Deck is supposed to be the best out of them all. And if you carry around a backpack with you, I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. I do portability. like that it comes with a case. Yes. That's really cool. Uh, the thing the thing that had me concerned was something that you, that you said on the podcast that I didn't realize. The games have to be on Steam. <laughs> Or at least oh, yeah. Linux based in some capacity. Mm -hmm. The games that I want to play on something like a Steam Deck that I were testing out on this Aya Neo, Call of Duty Warzone, Valorant, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh even Genshin Impact. None of those games or, or uh, Horizon. Uh, uh no, I'm sorry. Uh Forza Horizon. Yeah. None of those games are on Steam. Right. So it's it's kind of fucking useless to me. I mean, the emulation is going to be really cool, but again, I have a billion devices that do that. Yeah. Um. What was I going to say? Wh what I would think... you... go ahead? Go ahead. Sorry. No. What were you, what were you asking? I was going to ask what something you would want to do on a Steam Deck. I mean, the first thing I would do is be to test out the games I have in Steam on the Steam Deck, like the the bigger game, like. Uh, Max Payne 3, I have on Steam for some reason. Dishonored, I have on Steam. Like, AAA games. Yeah, I have a Steam how... library, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'll try some stuff out, but honestly, uh, there's, no, there's nothing on Steam that I'm clamoring to play. 
I'm yeah, playing like, uh, games that are off Steam right now. Like any game I would want to play on the go. Like I have a Switch already. Like I I don't have a need for this right now. And a lot of games like I'm perfectly fine sitting down on the couch what playing it on my TV. And uh, it, also too a lot of Steam games you know, especially the older games are designed for mouse and keyboard, not right. uh, controller. And I know there's workarounds and they're like, you can remap and stuff and it's got all the extra buttons and features, but like that only goes so far. So yeah, I don't but, know how well that's going to translate to a portable console like the Steam Deck. So that was my criticism of the Aya Neo is that a lot of the games that I want to play on here, probably mm -hmm. just better off getting a laptop for the same price. Yeah. The thing with the Steam Deck though is the Steam Deck's only $400. And it's yeah. probably just as powerful as this thing, if not more powerful. So yeah. uh, that does make a little bit of sense to me. And there are plenty of people who have a huge Steam library of like retro or, or uh, retro inspired games and like indie games and stuff. And that makes total sense to have a device like that for people like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. I'm a console gamer. I have consoles. I have most of my shit on the Switch that I want to play in that form factor. I have all my emulators on these other little portable emulators and stuff. Um, after having this Aya Neo around for a while, I'm like having fun playing stuff like Forza Horizon on it. But uh, like, it's cool to have a device like this. the 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 Steam Deck can have Windows on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen much about it, and it's not going to run games as good as it would if they were on Linux. So, yeah. again, if you have, like, a big Steam library, I'm sure you're going to have a great time with something like the Steam Deck. Otherwise, uh, I have all of these other things. I don't see where the Steam Deck's going to fit in my in my life, but I'll reserve I my don't judgment see where for when gonna, I actually get it. I don't see where it's going to fit in a lot of people's lives. Right. Like, I know it's getting good reviews, but first of all, a lot of the reviews are, this thing is great. It's basically in beta. It's bugging as hell. I've had a lot of problems using it. I've, I've had all these bugs happen. Uh, half my library doesn't work. Uh, eight out of ten. This thing is fantastic. You know, like it's current. It's very much unfinished right now. Valve has admitted that, and a lot of the reviewers are like acknowledging the fact that it's unfinished, but they're still treating it with like really high re remarks. Which, yes, it's technically impressive. But I think the fact that it's not as pick up and play as a Switch, the fact that you have to work for your games is going to turn a lot of people off. And that just goes back to what I've been saying since this thing was announced. This is a hardcore specialist device for people who would already spend $5,000 or more building up a gaming PC. Like This is for those people. So, I, I have to say, I'm honestly impressed by what I've seen so far in these Steam Deck reviews. And people do right. criticize it for being buggy and whatnot, but I'm impressed with the way the UI is, and I'm impressed with the way that it handles a lot of the games and, and the power that it has yeah. and, and, and stuff, and that the games run really good. I was very skeptical yeah. about all of that stuff. Um, there is a lot more work to be done, and I think by the time a majority of people who pre-ordered it get it, I think it'll be in a pretty good spot. Um, but again, yeah, I'm it's just a weird thing to fit into people's lives when we already have devices that do what it does and i'm not, again i'm not saying it's not impressive it's impressive as hell but you know i just don't know i i don't think this is gonna reach the audience everybody thinks it's gonna reach this is not a switch killer this is a luxury brand yeah gaming console like Rolex is Rolex makes the best watches in the world, but two people own Rolexes. Everybody owns Timex watches and Casio watches. Mm -hmm. That it's it's like that. Nintendo Switch is a Timex watch. Everybody owns it because it just works. It's reliable. You get the Rolex if you want to show off. Uh Brutal Beast says reviewers are getting the crap for it being buggy, not Valve. Again, the Steam Deck has this weird fan base around it. People who have never touched it or anything like it before, <laughs> and and they yeah. they're just, they just are so hyped about it that it's it's just like when a video game comes out that everybody's hyped for, and then it gets a bad review, and everybody just shits on that reviewer. Like it's 
again, people are defending the weird rollout of the Steam Deck. Like, you can't be, you can't criticize them for some reason. Remember when Valve was well, the scummy company that was that was uh, putting a weird DRM on their games back when Half Life Two came out? Okay, yeah, yes. You're, you're, but we're we're losing you. You're breaking up in a weird way. Like, yeah. You know. Come, what happens? Uh, right when you're I'm about trying to make, make a points. great point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should I leave? Leave and come back. Leave. All right. Goodbye. Uh, Dark type. Thanks for the hundred bits. Fukoko is my starter, but Weed Cat is still cute as fuck. Thank you for the hundred bits, Dark type. <laughs> Weed Cat. There you are, Will. Hi. Hey. Hi. What I was gonna say was the the zealotry and the fan base towards valve is honestly comparable to people who like Zack snyder's justice league <laughs> like i'm not even kidding i'm not like it, it's like religious fanaticism to the highest caliber like valve can do no wrong they've never done wrong gaben is the almighty if you have anything bad to say about valve you're you're a piece of shit because like valve look at all the hats they gave us in team fortress <laughs> 2 look at the hats it's it's like honestly it's it's this weird like weird all encompassing fanaticism towards valve that exists a company that has only put out like four games has a monopoly on digital online sales of video games on pc I mean, yeah, they, they've been very open. They have a lot of good uh, counter DRM practices. Uh, the way Steam works is fantastic. They're very, like, pro-consumer facing, but, like, doesn't mean you should. I will say, every time they release a game, it's pretty do. great. But, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, everybody's open to, to a little bit of criticism. Yeah. Absolutely. Um... But we're talking about how we don't know what the hell games we would ever play on this thing. Valve says they're open to put Game Pass on it. So, I, I mean, if they put Game Pass... So, Halo's already on Steam, but it doesn't work on the Steam Deck. It, it's it, it, it's broken. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but if they put Game Pass on this thing, and I could put I could play Forza on Game Pass on my Steam Deck, I have I'll have no reason for this Iron Odin. Well, that's not true because yeah. I could still uh, hook this up to a monitor and play Valorant on it and and Warzone and stuff. In an interview with PC Gamer, uh, when a when asked uh, when speaking to Valve President uh, Gabe Newell about the Steam Deck last week, he was asked. If Valve is interested in its own subscription service or whether we could see Game Pass games on Steam in the future. Uh, I don't think it's something that we think we need to do ourselves, building a subscription service at this time, Newell said. Uh, but, their, but for their customers, it's clearly a popular option and we'd be more than happy to work with them to get that on Steam. Uh, so I Valve's not interested in doing like their own version of Game Pass, but they are open to getting Game Pass on Steam Deck. I think that's something Microsoft would be interested in. Absolutely. Yes. Microsoft yeah. seems very happy to play ball with other companies. And and yeah. they have to have a good relationship with Valve because uh, it's on PC. They're a PC gaming company. So, um, yeah, I think this, although, is a, this would be a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Although, when it comes to, like, PC gaming, Microsoft is very, like... I mean, you're playing them on Windows computer. Why not just just buy them from us directly? Like there was games for Windows Live, which everybody hated. Uh, right. There's Xbox on PC, which people like better. And now it's like games for Windows, um, and people don't hate that. But like everybody uses Steam. I think well, Microsoft. Why would they put mad. Halo on Steam? I think because they realize that for Halo, they want as many people playing it as possible. That's what I mean. I I think that they're they're recognizing where everybody wants to play yeah. their games and 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 who they should support and whatnot. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to do something like this. Right. Um. Even if it's just streaming, 
stream streaming yeah. would be the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I don't know when the hell I'm getting my Steam Deck. I'm gonna try to reserve as much of my judgment as possible for when I get it in my hands. Yeah. And maybe by then you'll get a more finished product. Maybe. Like more games will be available to play. Like it won't be as buggy as the launch lineup was. Right. I honestly don't know what the hell I would be the first thing that I play. Probably just load it up with emulators, I guess. Yeah. Lee Doug, thank you for the two months. And Avatar Appa, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it. Bob, what IEMs do you use? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? Intense Epic Mother. Oh, in ear monitors. These are sure something. Around. Oh, you can do exclamation point headphones, I think. It should work. Will bought me some for uh for Christmas, but these are not them. Those I have in Yeah, my, I got you. I got you for your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um What did I just click? Oh yeah, these are the yeah, the the ones in the chat are, are the ones that I use. I don't they're not black though. The ones that I have are are clear. Oh, you can get them in blue. Sure, so, SE215 Pro wired earbuds, professional sound isolating earphones with clear sound and deep bass, single dynamic micro driver, secure in-ear fit, plus carrying case and fit case. So though these don't have a mic, the one Will got me are pretty much the same thing with a mic. Yeah. Uh, and they're sick. These are the ones where you squeeze, you stick in your ear, and then they expand so they don't come out. Uh, I put different uh, earpieces on the ones Will gave me. So they're like rubber, so they can go in and out easier. So, uh, you know, when I'm out and about, I can just take them in and out when I want to. Anyway, guys, uh, we're done with the news, but we got to do this thing. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Yeah. Quit of the week! This one's very simple. It's by Kirby underscore Popstar underscore. And it says, uh-oh, something is wrong with my Sonic 2 copy. Sonk! Uh, That's it. I like it because Sonk is a sound that the Sega Genesis could make natively. <laughs> it is. All right, we're going to talk to you people real quick. I got to pee, so make it quick. Yeah. Starting off with anybody who left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast. Last week we talked about uh, game uh, online talked services. About Switch online. For. Well, last week we talked about Switch online versus Virtual Console. Oh right, right, right. The yes. week before that we did the online services. Yes. I'm dumb. Jack Knight says episode sixty nine. Nice. Yeah. We didn't. I don't, did, we didn't even make any jokes about that last week. We did not. I'm very. I'm very disappointed in us. We'll try to do better, guys. Yeah. Uh, Sergio says, to be honest, if the Switch had virtual console instead of Nintendo Switch Online's free libraries, I would, a quote, free libraries, I would have never paid to play individual games, maybe only for a couple, like A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, A Don Kong Country, but having them available, I have played many, probably 20 plus NES, SNES, N64 games, and discovered many franchises I wouldn't have given a chance if I had put to pay extra. However, I think there needs to be a virtual console available for every for game preservation and agree with Will that they can have both like Amazon does. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that, I uh, you can have like the online service that you pay for and then some premiums that you can buy extra. Especially for like Nintendo Nintendo's own games. Like there's no reason why you can't buy Super Mario Brothers individually. From Switch Online. Like they, they clearly have the capability to emulate it on the Switch. Um even yeah. if they like you buy it on its own and like it's not an I like Super Mario Brothers is not an icon on the home screen, like you buy it and it's in the Switch Online app. Right. Like that, like that I can get behind. But like one or the other is not the way forward for this type of playing retro games i both should be the standard yeah i do I, I do think about that like i mean a lot of people like to complain about there not being a virtual console but i do think that the the subscription model that's there now 
gives people the opportunity to play a lot of games they never would have played otherwise. Yeah. I think that people who miss a virtual console are the ones who are like big fans and probably emulate all of this big, these big drops that Nintendo makes. Otherwise, yeah. the general public who has a Nintendo Switch Online account probably never would have played these games before. <laughs> They're also not going to be as vocal about wanting a virtual console. Yeah. MC says, I would be into some comic TV and movie conversation. I think you guys talked briefly about the Book of Boba at the top of the show once. So the problem is uh, we don't have a comic book show anymore. <laughs> but uh, nobody, f people fucking stop watching when we talk about movies or comic books. People, You could see yeah. the, we could see analytics live here on Twitch and people just leave. And then they don't come which back, is, which I like. I don't understand because everybody watches movies. It's it's one of like those everybody things, watches TV shows. It's one of those things where people say that they want it, but then uh, the numbers don't reflect it. So yeah, uh, and like if you, if you yeah, want that, bother Will on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and like I get not everybody reads comics, but like most of the stuff they're making movies out of is based on comics anyway. So you might want to pay attention because I know what's going to happen in the Marvel movies before you do. I've read Civil War before the movie came out. <laughs> Kali Motion says, I'm glad Will mentioned that it's not just Nintendo. There's PSX games I can't find or play anymore, even via piracy. My PS3 purchases were never honored on PS4, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, it's, really, it's really hard to emulate uh, some PlayStation stuff. And that's a weird situation where Sony made... First of all, Sony made the, 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 uh, the choice to not have backwards compatibility on the ps4 but a lot of that had to do with the ps4 architecture is dramatically different from the ps3 architecture they're completely different processors they're completely different system software and whatnot but you can buy ps2 games on the ps4 the ps4 is certainly more than capable of emulating ps1 games so those games at least could have been honored on ps on ps4 if you bought them on ps3 but they're not. They weren't. You can't even get PS1 games on PS4. So the Steam Deck can emulate PlayStation 3. Uh, it, there's a, there's oh. some weird bugs, but uh, I saw a video where a guy was doing that. What the hell's the guy's name? Somebody in the chat say his name. Um, Kunal Nadkarni says, I thought I was the only one trying to adjust with the new Comixology app. The fact that the recent updates deleted all my comics was such a pain too many issues with the app that's like a major issue yeah uh i know that they had like a big long twitter thread saying like we've heard you we're gonna address all these issues but like when like these are major issues on your your platform you had one you had one job and you were doing it so well and now you decide to slack off it was the fox who has been doing all the emulation on his steam deck Ah, uh, all right, guys. We're gonna talk to you real quick, cause yeah. daddy's got a pee. Yes. Uh, uh, Garrison uh, says in television stops fundraising. Uh, oh yeah. boy, we knew yeah. that was coming. They, I saw something where they said they they needed they needed X amount of money to be able to stay alive for like the next year. And the minimum amount of money they would they could get from their fundraiser would only keep them alive for the next two months. Oof. Yeah. Yikers. Uh, why not go go pee? Drinks water. I'm making piss. <laughs> oh, so here's a funny here's a funny thing. I took my Japanese lesson yesterday. Uh huh. Uh, and I I said, hold on. I said Morashimas instead of Moraimas. So my it's one character off. And my Japanese teacher right. started uh laughing. And he said okay. I tried to say to receive, and instead what I said was piss yourself by accident. <laughs> one character off. And I said that I pissed myself. I said I was going to piss myself by accident. That's what I said. Wow. 
So then I just formed a sentence with that in it instead. <laughs> Which is what's happening right now. I'm going to Modashimas. Good times. <laughs> anyway. How does someone get a gamer girlfriend asking for a friend? I'll tell you what. You don't get one by asking in a Twitch chat. That's what. Yeah, I'm... don't do that. Don't go looking for a, a gamer girlfriend. Don't don't go playing Valorant asking people for their number. Don't don't seek it out, please, for the love of God. If it happens, it happens. But don't don't try. Just just look for a buddy. <laughs> And, and take it from there. <laughs> the buddy doesn't have to play video games. Yes. Uh, don't tweet at Pokemon. Yeah, that's what Concrete Cloud says. <laughs> yeah. Um, Battle a Brutal Beast says, do you think Nintendo will backtrack 3DS and Wii U eShop closure like Sony did with PlayStation 3 and Vita? Absolutely no. not. Or Nintendo no. does not, they do not care. give a fuck. They do not care. They will yeah. they will shut that down. If you bug them, they will shut it down tomorrow. They're there. You are lucky they're giving you this amount of time to buy new games. Um Let's see here. Oh, here's the clip of Jackson finally beating this level. I'm gonna play it. All right, let's see how he did. So Jax was playing this level for a really long time, and he, he was mm -hmm. saying Bob will never beat this level. I don't know why he was talking so much trash. So I downloaded <laughs> it. I, I mean, I opened up my Switch, and I beat it in, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes. Let's mm -hmm. go! Let's he did. I'm proud of him. Go! Good, 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 yes! good work, Jackson. Good for him. Yes! He's also dressed up like a taco. Yes! As you do. Good, good, good for him. Get girlfriend, make girlfriend play games. There you, that's how you do it. That that's a double edged sword there, because if she doesn't like playing games, like you could be you could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just thought I'd drop it here, but I just picked up a grid tee from the site, and you can too. Yes, you can. You can go yes, you over can. to Wolf Den Apparel. Wolf Den Apparel dot com. com. We got glow in the dark t-shirts now. Nice, soft, very nice. We also got the hoodies are back. It was pointed out to me that they still say games, comics, and movies. So consider it a retro hoodie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. While you're at it, you could also get a desk mat. Also, though, this is the Screenwave store that you buy it from. Other people are here too. Re-Res, Pat the NES Punk, uh, Wood. You can buy their stuff as well. So, get wrap it all. Get get do do all your sh all your influencers shopping at one go. Uh, make a beanie, gift it to Kevin. I did. He never wore it. <laughs> I, le I legitimately when we made a beanie, I gave it to Kevin. And he never, but he did yeah. wear the hoodie and posted about it. So I'm I'm not gonna give him too much shit. There you go. At least the, he did something. <laughs> it's probably not his style of, of beanie because it's not. It's like one of those like slouch beanies it's or like old floppy. beanies. It's, yeah, it's he's not, not a floppy style. beanie guy. I like the floppy beanies though. Yeah. Oh my ramen's here. I think we got to end the show, Will. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If you got to eat ramen. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wolfdenpodcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfdenpodcast or your preferred podcast service of choice, such as Spotify, Google Play, and of course, iTunes and the Apple Podcast Store. We are number 100 in the video game space. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that does help us with placement on those respective platforms. If you subscribe, rate, and review us, we could very well be number 99 by next week. <laughs>
I have to be clear, we're somewhere around number 100. We fluctuate. Yeah. The highest we've gotten in the past like two months is 60. Nice. So we can we can go we can pump those numbers a little bit. Thank yeah. you for being here. I gotta run. Uh I'll be back on Twitch on Thursday. I'm not gonna be here on Wednesday. Too much to do. Big video stuff happening this week. So you make sure you're on the YouTubes. Get the notifications for all the shit. Yeah. Thank you for being here. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Oh, say hi to Dan. I'm rating Dan. Yeah. Say hello to Dan. He's playing Spider-Man. <laughs>